Alright guys, apologies for the uh, crash and the fact that there now have to be two files. Um, I'm just glad my cursing didn't get caught on the first recording. So, hopefully this lasts the rest of my stupid screen recording software lasts the rest of the time. Um, when we ended the last one, I had saved this file because we were in CS6 and I wanted to make sure I saved everything before everything crashed, which it did. Um, and now what we need to do is I need to bring in some of the other project files because these examples I'm using here, they're not set up correctly really for what I want to show you with pre-composing. So I'm just going to go to my blank space in my project panel and double click. And it brings me to the folder where I last opened something, which in this case was um, this parenting CS6 project file. And After Effects doesn't just import images and video and sound, it imports other project files from After Effects, which is so fantastic, I cannot even tell you how awesome it is that it does this now, because this is relatively new. So, we're going to bring in uh, 6D precompose dash move. Um, and this has the, the stuff in it that we want to deal with, right? So I say import, gives it a second, and you'll see what happened. It brought it in as its entire folder, blah, 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 dot AEP. And if you twirl that down, you'll see comps, comp finish, finish movies, the same stuff you see in all of the uh, example projects, right? So what we want to do is double click on Apple group comp. And if you want to, you can close the other compositions down here just to make things a little bit um, clearer, as it were. So I showed you before how to nest. You just literally take a composition and drag it into here, and you're fine. Um, but what if what you're working on sort of demands that, all right, this is my whole composition, but I need to stay in here, and I need these three things to be within their own. So I kind of need to add a composition in the middle rather than, um, you know, from, from out here. So you would just select all the layers that you want to go into a composition and you say composition, nope, just kidding, layer, because <laughs> we're dealing with layers, pre-compose. This is basically make comp out of things you have selected. And you can call it something better than pre-comp number one, please. Maybe Apple layers, something like that. And the other thing you can, um, there's not a lot of choices here because each layer has its own attributes. So you need to move all the attributes into the new composition. Um, you can tell it whether or not you want to open the new composition when you're done. And uh, just composition duration to the time span of the selected layers. Right. So this layer right here, this, this top wireframe apple, you can see it's longer than the other layers. So if I click that, it means instead of being the length of this original composition, which is five seconds, it's going to be however long the wireframe for the apple is. All right, so we just say OK. And it throws it into a new composition. And you can see if I pull this layer, it trims where the old one did, but you could keep going if you wanted to. And if I want to go into this composition, I double click, and there's the three layers. Right, so Apple Layers is now in the Apple Group composition. Um, they're still separate layers. I can still, you know, deal with them however I want to. Right, um, they all have their same transforms, all that jazz. It's just now that they're in this. And the reason to do that might be, I, don't, I normally I'd say if you want to put a drop shadow on everything, but they already kind of did that, so they kind of defeated the purpose of that. But maybe there's there's something else you want to do um, with an effect that needs to or maybe some kind of warp effect, and you want it to apply to all of these at the same time. You can't you can apply the same effect to multiple layers, but it won't be simultaneous. In other words, the apple will warp differently from this layer will warp differently from this layer. Um, so if you put them all in a composition right into their own composition you can then apply an effect to all three of them and whatever it's doing it'll do to all three of them simultaneously in the same fashion with the same randomization etc etc so that's why you might do that um, if I go into Apple layers where I can see my three layers sometimes you need to put a single layer in its own composition. It's not as common, but sometimes it's required as a workaround, maybe because it's usually when you have compound effects. Maybe there's an effect I need to put on this apple. 
but it's interfering with a different effect that I already have on there because I'm pretty sure there's already yes so there's already some effects on here there's a the tritone which I think yeah makes it greenish and then there's the drop shadow like I said before and maybe what I'm trying to do is interfering with these other effects so but it's this is the only layer I want to apply that effect to so I don't need to pre-comp all three things maybe I just need to pre-comp the apple itself when you do that, when you say layer, pre-compose, and it's only one, now you have a choice between these two things that you didn't have before, <laughs> right? Um, before, it said move all attributes to new composition. You could potentially, if you wanted to, leave all of the attributes on the layer that's here, except um, it, now instead of um, a video, it's going to be a composition, and uh, rather than burying them in the new composition and that what which one you use depends entirely on what you're doing um, basically if you need these this tritone and drop shadow effect to happen first then you need to bury them in the new comp right because it's gonna apply the things inside the little comp first and then apply the next ones if you need these to happen second then you would say leave all attributes here and you'll see that they'll still be here right these are still here and I can go in here and now the apples gray because there's no effects on this and I can I don't know warp it or do whatever it is I was going to do um, alright so th this order matters to After Effects um, the order of layers the order of rendering all matters we're gonna get into some of that more as we go as you guys do more stuff some of you are gonna run face first into it depending on what you're trying to do <laughs> um, know that there's usually always a solution um, to be had. It just might take a little bit of reordering of things. Check the thing. It's still recording. Um, all right. Speaking of render orders, we're going to double click on here again. We're going to bring in a different one. And we're going to bring in this one that says render order. Uh -huh. And we're going to say import. All right. And... I should mention, by the way, that now that we're working with more complex things, you want to save more often. I'm being terrible. I only saved once this whole time. All right. So what I want to show you, actually, is this one. There's render example number three, rasterization. And if I double click on here, there is an Illustrator file in here. Circles. Go oh, going around in circles. Ha, 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 ha. These guys love their puns. Um, and because it's an Illustrator file, it's technically a vector right but you'll see that when they scale it it gets kind of fuzzy because I think they're at more than yeah they're at more than a hundred percent of the scale by default After Effects will rasterize everything it brings in whether it's a vector or not um, you have to tell it no no After Effects this is a vector please do not rasterize until later so, there's a button for that. <laughs> in real life, there's an app for that. In After Effects, there's a button for that. Right after the Shy Guy dude, which is a little dude with a little nose here, there's a box. And it's underneath this category right here. It says Collapse Transformations, um, but underneath it says Continuously Rasterize. And if you click that, ta-da! It's all nice and clean now. Um, the reason this isn't turned on by default is, I think, a render time problem. Uh, at least an old render... Like, way back in the day when computers had two gigs of RAM, um, After Effects had a hard time continuously rasterizing. So you would turn this on when you wanted to see what it looked like, but when you were animating and it was going slow, you could turn this off and it would just like, it, would have, it wouldn't have to think as hard. This is basically a think harder button. Um, but if you're bringing in vector stuff and you're looking at it going, um, this doesn't look right, try clicking on this button. Now I will say that that button can have other effects um it, it there's a it, it serves two purposes um continuously rasterize and collapse transformations we'll talk about collapse transformations later but if you click on it and then certain effects go crazy um that's why so that that may be a time where you have to keep this uh vector art in its own composition so that you can tell it to be a vector and then tell the effects to go somewhere else um, that that would be that would be a time you'd have to do that but you're gonna notice that uh, eventually a lot of these switches down here 
have to do with the quality of what you're doing. Um, this one right here, this this line, you can see that it's like meh quality, better quality. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know what the curve line is, that's new. Um, but you can see blah quality, good quality, right? This is another quality button. Um, it's a type of sampling that's going on. So um, again, the better the quality, the harder it is to render. Seems very silly for such a simple vector graphic, but eventually you're going to have um, larger and larger files. You may want to turn that to crummy quality in, until you're done. Um, and by the way, if you're trying to test this and you're like, it always looks fuzzy, make sure your resolution down here is set to full. I know the computers in the lab set it to like a quarter by default. I don't know why. Um, they're fast enough to handle most of what we're doing, so if things look like crap, make sure that your resolution is set to full. Um, even if it's set to a quarter, it will render beautifully. It just looks like crap in here. Alright, so that I believe is it for lesson six. We didn't go over the whole thing because some of this is, is uh, getting a little ahead of the game. Um, but when you're done with this clicking through, um, can you please save it? We'll do save. And then uh, submit to Blackboard under, you know, in-class assignments lesson six. Um, this is more has to do with the fact that you guys aren't here, like we weren't in class, so I have to um, double check that people are actually doing these things. And especially s since um, I went through this completely differently than the book did, um, I want to make sure that you guys are getting the lesson in. All right. Um, and if you have any questions, please email me.